Idaho Republican Senator James Risch, Chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. He is our headliner from the Hill. And sir, good morning to you good and morning. welcome back to our program morning. here. It's been disagreement. Thank you, for having um, you bet. Happy New Year to you. A lot of disagreement over uh, Democrats and some Republicans about what they heard yesterday. What did you hear behind closed doors about the threat that <laughs> Soleimani posed? Well, uh, look, uh, uh, this is a democracy and uh, debate is very, very healthy. Um, I, have to, I have to start with a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm also on the Intelligence Committee and spent almost a dozen years there. So my understanding of, of this background, uh, first of all, was a little deeper than what, was, uh, what, what is generally out there right now. And uh, secondly, it has a history of about 12 years. So look, that, um, uh, that uh, briefing that they had yesterday was done by five of the uh, best people the, the administration has. It was good. It was in depth. It was clear. Um, I fully understand that there's a partisan divide on this. And of course, we have two or three on our side that come at it uh, also disagree, but for different reasons. But look, this is healthy. Uh, we'll get through this. And uh, this debate over uh, the use of military force has been going on since George Washington was president. This is democracy. So this is the in way it a work. word, were you convinced of what they said yesterday, yes or no? Absolutely, and I was convinced of it uh, long before we had that uh, briefing yesterday because, as I said, the day before that, I had spent most of the day uh, sitting through uh, intelligence briefings by okay. a number of the intelligence Here agents. is your colleague, Mike Lee, senator from Utah. He disagrees strongly with your assessment. Probably the worst briefing I've seen, at least on a military issue, in the nine years I've served in the United States Senate. It is not acceptable for officials within the executive branch of government, I don't care whether they're with the CIA, with the Department of Defense or, or otherwise, to come in and tell us that we can't debate and discuss the appropriateness of military intervention against Iran. It's un-American, it's unconstitutional, and it's wrong. Worst briefing in nine years. <laughs> what do you make but, of look, that? My, uh, uh, Mike is a dear, dear friend. He's a really, really bright guy. And as you can see from that, he has strong feelings about when uh, the law allows the president to, to use military force. The president has three things available to him. He's got his inherent uh, Article II constitutional authorities. Uh, he has the War Powers Act, and he has the 2002 uh, declaration of the use of power in Iraq, with this, which this specifically covered. Mike feels strongly that uh, the, the uh, uh, point at which the president can use power should be handled differently. Specifically, uh, Mike was frustrated. I sat there and watched him argue with these people. He wanted them to give them a definition of when we were at war and when we were going to war. And uh, they brought the lawyers in and everything else. And of course, uh, I, I've sat through lots and lots of hours of debate on this. That is a, uh, it, it isn't a bright line, unfortunately. It's a gray line in today's world unlike what it was when the Constitution was written. But look, this is a re robust debate. We should uh, uh, approach that debate in good faith and do our best to, uh, to, to resolve this. The American people sure hope that's the case. Senator, what can you tell us about the current threat that Iran poses today? Well, uh, Iran, uh, the, the threat really hasn't changed that much. What, what I, one of the things that's been lost in the national reporting on this is all the criticism that's been given to the president. He doesn't have an Iran strategy. He doesn't know where he's going. He's shooting from the hip. What you need to do is take that speech that he gave yesterday morning. That wasn't an off-the-hip speech. It was, it was a text speech. He was giving it off a text. That is the policy, this administration's policy on Iran. It was the policy before the events of this week. It was the policy during this week, and it is the policy going forward. I guarantee you in Iran, they're taking it sentence by sentence, pulling away the punctuations and looking at it, and, and the American people, and especially my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, and especially the national media, ought to do the same thing, which, which was a clear, clear expression of, of this administration's policy on Iran. Senator, can you tell us more, because we've heard military generals and the president give so much credit to the intel that was given to the United States, the heads up to get our American troops out of harm's way before that strike actually hit those bases. What was that and what did you learn about that? Yeah, uh, a lot, uh, but unfortunately uh, that stuff is classified and I can't talk about it here. Uh, it, we, there is tremendous amounts of intelligence that go back and forth. Um, 
a lot of communications that go back and forth between countries that that I'm sorry we can't we just can't uh, unpack here. Uh, but it's important stuff. It, it seems as if you're saying one thing, and people like Mike Lee and Rand Paul are saying another. If I, if I hear the distinction clearly. What Mike Lee is arguing is whether or not the president has the authority to take military action. Correct. Uh, I think what, what the reporters were curious about learning yesterday is what, whether or not people like you were convinced that Soleimani was a clear and imminent threat to Americans serving in Iraq or other places in the Middle East. It, do, do I was. I, and do, it do wasn't, I understand and it, the distinction correctly? And, and if that is the case, was Soleimani on the verge of killing Americans in Iraq or elsewhere? It, the, in answer to that last question, the answer is yes, clearly yes, emphatically yes. The, the question of what the difference is on the use of military force, I think is quite a bit more sophisticated than what you laid out. And I don't mean that derogatorily, it's just a, a difficult and complex question. I, I think that uh, 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 the, the question that Mike Lee is arguing is, at what point can the president do this? And I, I th that's again an oversimplification, but it is a complex question. Senator, and one we, that deserves to be. Are we in a time of de-escalation right now? How long does that last? Yeah, I really hope so. Um, you know, you've heard the debate over whether they really intentionally needed to, or whether they in intentionally put their uh, rockets in a place where no Americans would be hurt or killed. Look, they knew what the red line was. This thing had been escalating for the last year. The president had set a, set a red line that if you kill someone, we're going to do something. They did. He did. And what he did was not proportional. It was substantially more than proportional. And it was done intentionally to restore deterrence against Iran because they'd been pushing the envelope. They'd been escalating. And he did what he did. Look, we're in a spot right now where there's a debate as to whether or not they intended to hurt or kill somebody or whether they didn't. I truly hope that they did not. Uh, I knew what was coming next. Once those lo rockets were launched, I was praying because had they taken American lives in that attack, we'd be in a very different place than we are right now and heaven help us all. Senator, thank you for your time. Senator Rich, Republican thank you. of Idaho, we will speak again. Thank, thank you. you.